Welcome to Learn to Draw with Ted Jordan. Today I'm going to show you some of the secrets I have accumulated through the years in drawing faces, animals, landscape, uh, all kinds of different things. And I'm going to teach you some secrets on how to use as few lines as possible to be able to draw something that looks good and looks real. Okay? So what I want you to do is relax, watch the video, then when we're done, I want you to rewind the video, get your pen, your pencil, your paper, and begin practicing everything I've drawn. And if you do, I guarantee you're going to be a better artist. Okay? Let's get started. We're going to begin by drawing people. More people draw people than anything else in the world. Let's start right now. There it is. One simple circle. Let's see what we can do with it, okay? I'm going to add on, you got it, a couple of ears. Let's put some hair on. As I draw the hair, you're going to soon find out who this is. It's not a girl, nope. We're going to try to draw a picture of Dad, the Dad of the 90s, okay? Now, we've got the hair, we've got the ears. Here's a little secret on where to place that nose and the eyes. Let's go across from the bottom of the ears, right about there. Make a thin little mark. Remember, I'm using a felt tip marker today so you can see clearly what I'm doing. But if you were taking your time to draw something special, you'd use a pencil first, then fill in with your ink. Now up here above the ears, let's go across from the top of the ears. Make just a thin little mark, okay? That gives us our perspective and sets up right where we're gonna put our eyes and our nose. Let's go ahead and fill that in now. I'm going to make a simple nose, a couple little bent lines for the eyes. Let's put an eyebrow there too, okay? And now let's fill in the eyes. Here's a secret I've learned about drawing eyes. Two little zeros, two little circles with a white hole in the middle. You know what that's for? Just leaving that little white circle in the middle Acts, acts as though there's a reflection of light on the eyeball, which there is in everybody we look at every day. So you always try to leave a little bit of white on the eyeball and it makes for a reflection, it makes the person come alive. Let's go ahead and put a mouth now on. There we go. He's got kind of a short little chin and uh, I make those little marks on both sides of the mouth to represent cheek, and right below the mouth, I make another little half a U type shape. That represents the chin. Quick little marks can go a long ways in drawing, okay? Now I have made him a little short. It looks like he doesn't even have a chin, so you know what we're gonna do? Let's give this guy a little bit of a beard. Little goatee. I'm just going to put a couple little lines in his ears. Those little marks represent the ear right there. And there we go. Hey, we've got Dad, and he's got a little goatee, and with a few lines. We used, what did we use? We used a circle, lots of circles, and a few lines. And there we've got it, a face. We're going to come back to Dad in just a moment. I'm going to move over here, and we're going to go ahead and draw somebody else. This time, we're going to change the shape just a little bit. Kind of a peanut shape, okay? Now, let's add some hair. Here we go. Just, it's fun to make hair. And we'll be working more with hair as we move along, but let's uh, give her kind of that little Annie look. There. Now, let's go ahead, and we may not see her ears, but we've got to kind of imagine where they are so we can place the nose and the eyes at the right spot. Now remember, in cartoons, you can kind of do your own thing. You can stretch things, you can shorten things. It doesn't have to be perfect. In real drawings, we're not discussing that right now and studying that today, but in the real portrait drawings, everything really has to match perfectly in perspective. But let's go ahead and uh, kind of imagine where that nose is gonna be right there and the eyes right about here. We're going to change the eyes. Watch this. I'm going to go ahead, make those, looks like eyebrows, but they're not. We're going to go ahead and put some eyelashes on. And notice what I'm doing? 
making some big eyelashes. Then, I'm going to change the eyeballs. We're going to make the eyeballs look a lot bigger on this, uh, on this little Annie here, little orphan Annie. Now, I'm going to come into the middle, make my zeros again, my, my Cheerios, where we can see right through at the reflection. Hey, look at those eyes coming alive here on Annie. I want you to practice this. Remember, don't just sit and look at this video and forget about it. You come back and draw everything I'm doing. You're going to be a better artist. You won't forget these moves, but you will forget them if you just look at them and don't draw. Now, let's put, we're going to make the nose real simple this time. Over here on Dad, I made the line kind of come down. You know where the nose line is. But you're going to find out you don't have to do that. Sometimes the shadowing doesn't show the long part of our nose. So there's little orphan Annie's nose. Now, here's what we're going to do. Let's make some cheeks. There's those little cheeks again. Two little lines, a line across. But we're going to change her mouth a little bit. She's growing up and, boy, she's having some trouble with her teeth. She's losing a few and she's got a few. Let's go ahead now and make the mouth. There we go. And as you can see, hey, look at those two little buck teeth there. She's lost a couple other teeth, but I'm going to fill in the mouth with black. It's called contrasting. And when you do this, now look how those teeth are jumping out. You can really see them. And let's put that little line again for the bottom lip. Light coming down from above, the lights in the ceiling and the sunshine that comes down always makes a little shadow, not on the top of the lip, but at the bottom lip. And that's why we put that little line right there. Now let's finish off Orphan Annie with a few little sun kisses. There we go. And hey, look at that. We've got kind of a wild and crazy little, she's probably a red-haired kid, okay? Now we're going to go back over to Dad for a minute. Let's go over here. A lot of people say, well, all I can draw is stick figures. Nonsense. I don't want you to ever draw a stick figure again. I'm going to show you how you can take two sticks and make them look ten times as good. Most people would draw a stick right down there. We're going to deal with that in just a moment. I'm going to go ahead. To make it real simple, I'm just going to take a line off of Dad right there. There's one stick. Here's another stick. Okay? And a line across the middle. Now watch this. Another stick. We've got two short sleeves. Watch this simple little trick. This stick goes down right there. If you don't want to get fancy, you don't have to. And you can still make them look good. Now you see those two little lines I've just drawn? That looks like Dad's got his hands in his pocket. Let's continue. Let's draw these two sticks on down. Let's put a stick in the middle. A crossover right there. Two lines across. Look what's coming to pass. We're drawing a full body of somebody with as few lines as possible. Now, how hard is it to draw shoes? Well, again, practice. How I learned through the years in drawing was I would copy and practice from coloring books, from comic books, from the Sunday paper. Do the same thing. I don't have time to teach you every style, but I can give you an idea on how simple it can be. There. Now, a couple little lines. Look at that. Dad's got a pair of shoes on. Those three little lines represent shoestrings. And I make an extra line underneath, which represents the sole of the shoe. Now, we can always fix him up with a belt. We could even put a little tie on him, give him a collar. Whatever you want to do, it's fun. And it doesn't take much, just a few lines. Let's jump over here to Orphan Annie once, and we'll change a few things. We give her a little neck. Expression is so important when we're drawing. Not everybody stands straight like Dad is. Let's go ahead and fix Orphan Annie up. Now look at this. Just a few little scribbles there, and we've given her a little bit of fringe. Now with cartooning, you're going to notice I don't waste a lot of time drawing the hands there. You can if you want, but sometimes just rewind and see what I've done, what I'm going to continue to do with hands. Just a few fingers makes it fine, and don't worry if there's five fingers. Walt Disney drew a lot of his characters with only three fingers, four fingers, okay? Now, let's put her in a little dress. 
little flower right there. And uh, let's make her happy. Because her dad just told her she gets to go to the circus. Again, I'm making very simple shoes. And you know what I'm going to do? Here's a little secret for the legs. I just draw a six. See that? I write a six in there. The six actually kind of represents a little, a little wrinkle there by the knees. There we go. And now, of course, she's jumping. She's excited. So I'm making a little shadow. Look at how simple it is to make a shadow. That's all we need right there below her. It shows that she's off the ground because she's not touching that shadow. Always make your shadow a little below if they're jumping. Now watch, we're going to really make her moving. A couple wiggles right around her clothes. Look at that. There's little orphan Annie. She's jumping and she's excited. And I'm just going to hold for a second and let the camera shoot these two right here so you can go back and you can stop your video if you have to to finish up what you're drawing and then we're going to flip over and we're going to go to the next drawing okay good now let's move on to the next drawing not everybody's going to draw somebody looking straight at them let's draw somebody from the side there we go now i'm going to show you something about sticks you can use a stick man to help you fill out the fuller picture watch one stick for the neck, a stick for the shoulders. He's going to be walking. When you walk, you're leaning forward. There's another stick right there for, the, um, for his hips. Now, a stick and a circle, a stick and a circle, a stick, circle for the, for the uh, 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 knees. Forgot there for a moment. There's a circle down there for his ankles. Now, here's a little something interesting. When you're walking, drawing somebody walking, you don't put the left foot forward with the left arm. Nobody walks like that. It would really look weird except for those monsters in the movies. So this, the right arm has to go forward with the left foot. And then the other arm goes back. The left arm goes back with the right foot. It's opposite, okay? Now there's a stick man. There's his hands. You can draw something like this with a pencil to begin with. Then, here's a little secret. Just fill in. Watch. I know it might get a little uh, uh, difficult to see here with what I've, I've begun to do, but let's just begin filling him in. Draw your real lines outside of the stick line. Look at what I'm doing. There. Watch. Draw your stick lines like that. Draw them. See? And then you can erase that little stick man, and you know what? It'll help you to actually get the movement of what you want to do. You can put your shoes on. You get the idea what I'm doing? There. Draw the stick man right around him. And you begin to get a flow, a feeling of movement, okay? And then you can always fill in. You can color in the lines if you want to, which shows, uh, uh, you know, giving texture to your clothing, light and dark, and you can put striped shirts on. You can do a lot of things. But that gives you a little better idea as I close in. And you see the movement going on. He's walking, and that gives a lot of action and a lot of feel to a drawing. Now drawing somebody from the side works about the same way as drawing from the front. Get your ear in place. Come over, make that little mark that we've talked about, okay? Let's go ahead and add some hair. Let's go ahead and add the eye, a nose, make a face. If we make him smiling, that's fine. A couple marks for the ear. You can even show part of the other eye on the other side of his head. And we can even give him some teeth if you want to. But you see, perspective 
Try drawing the head from every view. And, and as you do, you're going to see there's other things you've got to work with. But it's still a lot of fun, and you can always remember the principles of putting the ear in first and then making your little marks for the nose and for the eyes, okay? We can give him a little mustache. There we go. Now, we're going to draw one more, and this is uh, a little old man. Give him his ears. He's been losing some hair through the years. But this guy, he's kind of mad. Somebody's been running around in his front yard probably. And if you see what I've done, you can turn the lines the other way. When they're happy, you can make the lines go up like this. That makes somebody happier relieved. When they're mad, turn them around, as I'm doing here. Now let's give him a, kind of a rough looking nose. And again, another secret. You want him to be mad. Boy, look how big and bulgy those eyes are. He's really mad. We're going to give him some teeth. Sometimes drawing teeth, I don't draw teeth very often because people don't really get to see the teeth. But if you want to draw teeth, make them for an expression for a purpose. Look at those teeth. He's really mad, okay? Look at him. And uh, we've got a few wrinkles in his head. And here's another secret about drawing people. You don't have to draw the whole body sometimes to show that there's somebody there. Watch this. He's probably standing at his store. There's his hands. And look at this. That's all. He's standing behind uh, a, a table, or he's standing behind a counter somewhere. Very simple. And that way you don't have to worry about drawing the legs and the feet. So be creative as you practice drawing people, okay? And you're going to have a lot of fun. Begin practicing everything. Go back and watch the video on the people portion. We're going to come back in just a moment, and we're going to learn how to draw some fun animals. Hey, let's take some time now and have some fun drawing animals, okay? A little different than drawing people. We'll start off with a circle. Put some extra cheek on that head, okay? Because we're going to have some fun with this guy. Notice what I'm doing here. Yeah, I think we're going to end up with a kitty cat. But I'm altogether different. The head comes out a little bit further because of those big cheeks. And look at this. That nose is altogether different. I make kind of a big pancake type of thing here. But I make that. Look at that nose. I do kind of a little Cheerio hole again, donut with leaving a hole in the middle. Why? Because that light is shining on that nose. Also, these little spots in here kind of represent where the little hairs are sticking out. Even though you can't see the hairs, we need to put them on the dogs and cats so that people can see that there are some little hairs sticking out. And I throw a couple of hairs in there. Now, let's go ahead and make these eyes a lot bigger. His eyes are going to be altogether different. And let's put the eyeballs right in there. And again, the same little circle with the light so it shines and it reflects. I'm going to make his mouth. We make a little cheek way over here, a little cheek way over there, okay? And you know what we're going to do? We're going to have him sticking his tongue out. There we go. Now, he doesn't look like he has much hair on his head. Let's go ahead and add a little bit of hair. And you know what? You can do it, a little bit of fur, just with a few little spots. Actually, when I'm drawing, I like to break it, but I didn't do it this time. I'm going to show you in just a second when we draw his body. But you add a few of those little spots, and sometimes all it can be is just a dot, and then a little line, like that. It makes a feeling of fur hair. Here we go. Now let's draw his body. 
Here's where I'm going to show you the difference. Instead of drawing a straight line for an arm with a human, I'm breaking it up. Let's give him those three paws. There we go. Now let's go back in, like I just showed you, and give him a little bit of texture, some fur. Hey, that looks a lot different, doesn't it, than uh, just a straight line. A straight line wouldn't give a feel of fur. We've got to give that texture. Now, watch this. How hard is it to draw these guys? Not too hard. You just have to always think creative. And that's what's fun about drawing. You can come up with something nobody's done before. Look at that. Look at all those toes down there now. We've got three in the back, three in the front, six, nine, and 12. A little bit of fur. And boy, look at this furry looking guy. Now let's give him his tail. There's his tail. And let's make it wiggly. Hey, this guy's happy. Looks like he's getting ready to be uh, fed dinner or something, you know? And a little line going out on both sides kind of shows that there's a wall back there. That's all you need, a little line. Of course, you could go into more detail on your backdrop, and maybe we can learn that on another video sometime. But now we're just studying how to do the basics. And there's our kitty cat, and he looks like he's ready to eat. We're going to go ahead, and we're going to draw, let's draw a dog. Now I'm going to just try to draw the circle a little lighter this time. And I'm going to draw his nose. Now, if you look, we could make a couple of animals out of that already, couldn't we? Look at I can see even the nose of a bear right there, or many other animals. But we're going to try to draw a dog. Let's see if we can do it. Look at me make that hair. Keep your hand moving. Remember, the secret is what you do with the lines. Let's make that nose. I'm going to put a little bit of reflection on the nose. There we go. And again, the big, big eyes, uh, eye, eyelids here. Put a little eye, uh, eyelashes. Put that eye in there. Hey, somebody's coming around here. Now remember, this is a line that we would normally erase out, but I'm going to try to cover it too. Let's give this dog a smile. There we go. Matter of fact, this dog is getting to look pretty cute. I think we might even put a little bow in her hair. <laughs> look at that. Put a cute little collar. Let me show you something about drawing collars. I leave a little bit of a white line to represent that light reflecting again. Study. As a kid growing up in those cold winters when I grew up in Minnesota, I studied and I looked at how every artist and cartoonist drew and I remembered things from them. Here's this little doggy. Now, we can have this little doggy sitting in a box if we wanted, or we could put the same body on that we have over here. Let's just put a quick little body on. Watch. There we go. Doesn't take a whole lot. There's kind of a furry, cute little dog here and with a cute little tail. And you know what? Let's make that tail wiggle. Two little lines will add so much to this picture. Look at it. The little tail is wiggling. The little doggy must see something, maybe a bone over here. Hey, maybe it is that bone. Let's draw that bone right there. There we go. Okay, good. And a little shadow. A little bit of extra hair. And we've got a cute little dog and a cat. Now, I'm going to flip on over. And I want to show you that most animals are made up of the same, the same thing. Watch this. I'm drawing a horse for you. 
circles. See how I'm using my circles? You can build it just like you're almost using building blocks. Like I showed you how to draw people. Now, in drawing animals, I'm going to teach you hopefully a secret you won't forget. Animals' legs do go down in the front just like men's legs, people's legs, okay? But in the back, let me show you something. They bend. That's right. Then comes their, their knee, and then they come forward a little bit. It's that spring that God built into them. That spring. So they can really jump and run. Now, with this animal, we're putting a regular hoof, and by looking at that hoof, you probably know what we're drawing by now. We'll put a pretty mane, a couple of ears. You can put in your eyes however you'd like. Put the rest of the mane there, the other side. And then later, you can customize it. A horse's back is always bent a little bit. So you'd sweep it down like that. You'd sweep the tummy down too. And then you can go ahead and fill in your horse. Put the hoofs, put your little shadow. And you know, since that leg is over on the other side in the back, sometimes you shadow even part of the leg. There. And it kind of stands out nicer, doesn't it? Of course, you can texture like we did with the other animals and erase your lines. But I'm going to draw one other animal for you and show you how he's a lot different, but yet he's the same. This time, just the little hoofs show you that it's somebody else. But watch, here's the same on the back legs. Bring the legs back and bring them forward. Back, bring them forward, okay? It's a good little secret to remember about drawing animals. Let's put a little tail on him there. Hey, uh-uh. I think we've got a television, a movie star coming up here. His name might be called Babe. Now look what I'm doing right there on that circle. A circle for the head, and yet a pig's nose comes out. A circle with two little lines coming out sideways. Let's make him smiling. He's really happy. And look at those teeth on him. Now I'm going to show you a different way to draw eyes. This time, I made two sixes. Look at that. Just a six sometimes has been used to actually be an eye. Now a pig does not have fur. So you know what? We just add a few little hairs here and there. It's best to add a few little hairs too. Right along the edge of the legs makes for a feeling, okay? There we go. There's a pig, there's a horse, we've drawn a dog, and we've drawn a cat, okay? And next we're going to be moving on to drawing landscapes, outside, outdoors, scenery, okay? So stay tuned. Now, let's change a little bit. Let's not draw moving objects. Let's have some fun and draw the great outdoors, okay? Let's draw a scene, and it's a lot of fun. Watch. Let's begin with the horizon. Right there. One line straight across the paper. That is the horizon. That's what we see when we look out. If we were driving through the desert and it was sunset, you'd see a straight line. Now, of course, the earth turns, but we can't see that far, and we're not back far enough to see it turn. All we know is the horizon is a straight line. You know what we're going to do? Let's add a couple mountains. Or we better call these foothills, okay? There. Now, when you're going to try to with a scene like this, do perspective and dimension and feel and depth. You just don't draw a road straight down like that. Mm -mm. You bring it and you take it in. And remember, the further things go into the distance, the thinner and the smaller they get. Look how big the road is here and how I made it get smaller as it goes down towards the edge 
of the horizon. Okay, now let's add a little barn. I grew up on a farm and I love barns. There we go. And we're going to add a silo. Some of you don't know what a silo is. You got to go out to a farm sometime. They fill this tall cement building full of corn, grass, and a variety of things to feed the animals in the wintertime. There, we put that silo tall right behind the barn. Here's another little secret of drawing which I love. Overlap your pictures. And we're going to do lots of overlapping in this scene right now. I didn't draw the silo over here, but I drew it to where part of it goes behind the barn. Look how nice that looks when the silo's back there overlapping and the barn overlaps. Now, I'm not going to take the time to draw every shingle. Can't do that unless maybe it's an oil painting. But I did do a few little shingles right there, a couple little lines and marks to give the feeling that there is shingles on top of the barn roof. Okay, now I'm going to add some trees. Didn't take me long, did it? <laughs> well, watch. And I'm just going to fill those trees in. But if you notice what I'm doing, I'm not making them fully black. I'm leaving little white spots in there because anytime you look through trees, you always see through. You see some light and reflection from the other side. There we go right there. Okay, now let's go over here and I'm going to add a different type of tree. Maybe those are nice oak trees. But look what I'm doing here. I'm going to make some fir or pine trees, a forest of them. Look how I do it just little repetitive lines and you know what you never make them all the same height that would be boring in art always make one big one little see here's a little one maybe we'll do another smaller one right there then let's go back and make a big one right here there we go and we'll finish with one little one over there look at that we've got some Christmas trees over here on the side of the hill. Now remember, when drawing a scene, we've got to balance things out. So in a minute, we're going, well, we'll do it right now. I'm going to move over to this foothill over here and let me add a few Christmas trees over here. It's called balancing. And it's very important. Remember, this goes for photographers as well as artists. When you go outside, by nature, things sometimes don't seem balanced. But artists have to make it balanced to make it look really good. And that's what I'm doing, adding these trees. And one little one right over here. One little one here. There we go. Now it's beginning to feel balanced. Some trees here, some trees over here. Now I'm going to bring this line back down in because I knew I was going to draw that barn. And I'm going to finish with some oak trees just back there. You know what happens? When I do the oak trees, look at the black against the white. It makes the white barn come out even stronger. Black against white. Remember your contrasts. Black pair of pants with a white shirt or striped shirt, a black hat. Use uh, colors if you can. In this case, we're just doing black and white for time purposes, but it helps. Now look how those trees have made my barn and my silo stand out even more. Now we're going to have some fun. We're going to put this picture, I think, way out in the Rockies somewhere. Look what I did with one little line, and it took me five seconds. Remember, I'm stressing what you can do with a few lines. You see that line? I bet you know what it is already. Mountains. And look at this. Another little line right there and here. You know already what it is, don't you? Snow. Snow on top of the mountains. And you know what? I could take a lot of time and, and fill in, and we could go on forever here, but maybe that'll be on a different video. But I'm giving you the main idea what to do with as few lines as possible. Now, this is out there in Wyoming or out in Montana. Let's make some clouds. Remember what I was saying about variety? 
Here it is. Look at that big billowing cloud. And I don't even know what kind they are again. I forgot. They taught me when I was a little girl, in, I mean a little boy in school. <laughs> but uh, there it is, a big, beautiful cloud. And I'm going to go ahead, add a little texture again, just like we did on the animals, like the fur and stuff. Here, we'll do cloud texture to show there's more clouds. See? A couple little lines. Let's do another one right here. There we go. And no, we could paint that in pretty blue and it would look beautiful. Now, I've got a balance again. So I'm going to go to this side. I'm going to draw a few more clouds. Look at that. And notice what I do. I make the little cloud, and then a bigger one, a little one. Variety. It's important. I'm going to make a couple other ones right there. Okay, good. You do the same when you're drawing, okay, when you're following drawing this landscape. Now for variety, to break things up a little bit, I'm going to make a big one right here in the middle. There. And you know what? A couple little lines inside. And sometimes for fun, a lot of big clouds come along with little thin vapor type clouds, like this. See that? I run little lines and it's nice for texture. The lines come across through there. There we go. There we are. Now we've got our clouds, we've got our barn. Let's put a couple of birds in the sky. There they are. Look at that. Three little V's. One bigger, one smaller. Threes. Sometimes threes work real good or fives. The off numbers, the odd numbers. Look at those birds. They're just up there having a great time, and they could be Canadian geese. We don't know what they are. But uh, now I'm going to come down here a little bit. I've got to stoop down, and we're going to draw a fence. We need some fence posts right along this road. Look what I'm doing as we go further in. They get thinner and thinner. Need some boards on them. And the boards get thinner and thinner because we can't see that far away. You've always got to remember that. Now I'm going to make a little texture in the boards, a little wood feel. This is a secret on drawing wood. You can make little knots by just drawing a little circle, a little donut, but it's a long donut. And you can just kind of give it a funny little twist with your lines. Look at it. See? Texture is important with whatever you draw. If it's fur, or if it's hair, or if it's grass. Let's go out here and draw some grass. Just can't leave this pasture barren. And you know what else we're going to do to show there's lots of grass? Right along the bottoms. They, they don't get close to these these, uh, uh, these little poles here, and they don't get to mow them. So you know what? The grass grows up thicker around a little pole. There we go. See? Just a little bit of grass and a couple lines. Goes a long way. I could take forever putting grass everywhere, but we don't have to when we're doing sketching and drawing. Now, here's the road. We need some little rocks. This isn't grass. This is tough clay and dirt. Look what I'm doing. A little bit here and a little bit there. See what I'm doing? I don't do it all in one spot. I make it get smaller as it goes. But that gives it a feel of hard old dirt, of a bumpy dirt road. There we are right there. Now I'm going to move over here and uh, add a little bit right through those foothills. We're going to try something different right down here. Remember, this would be just like where the camera is at, right up close, if the camera was taking a picture. I'm going to draw mm -hmm, a mailbox. And the sun's shining today because we know the clouds are kind of broken up, so I'm going to leave a little shadow right underneath that mailbox, okay? 
little board around it just like that. There we go. And we're going to put that flag out. You don't see these kind of mailboxes too much anymore, but we're going to put it right there and then we're going to put some. Now let me tell you another little secret. Sometimes when you're drawing, you can draw right to the border of the paper or you can kind of let it fade out. We're just going to kind of let that one fade out like that. Then we're going to make one last big post and run some fence right along here. Just like that. Another post. There we go. My boards are getting a little crooked over here. Let's put our texture in on our fence. So it looks like wood. There. And we've got a mailbox down by the end of the lane. Now over here we've got an open spot. We could do a lot of things here as we close out this section. But you know, nothing I think would be nicer than a cow. And I'm just going to try to draw this cow uh, without any extra lines. Okay? Just to show you that if you practice through the years, you can almost draw without having to make your little lines. Lots of practice you can do it. Remember what I said about the legs. The legs bend back like the spring, and then they come forward. And the sun shines out, so I'm going to shadow underneath these legs because they're hidden underneath the cow. And you know what? This cow's having a good time today. She's wiggling her tail. Look at that. And you know what? When I was a little kid, I used to milk cows called Holsteins. So I'm going to make this a Holstein cow. And they were white with big old black dots on them. A little texture here. And look at that. The cow's eating some grass over there. Let's go ahead and put a little more grass in here like that. And if we wanted, we could put more bushes and more trees. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to leave that up to you. And there we have it. Here is a landscape. Fun. You don't have to spend hours drawing. You can if you'd like uh, the scenes, but just to even sketch. Next time you're out visiting somebody out on the farm or the ranch or out in the desert, take the time and pull out that pencil and just draw and begin doing like we've done, as few lines as possible. Next, we're going to come back with our bonus feature of this video, My Secrets on Drawing Caricatures, and it's coming up right now. At first I thought, well, should I do this or not? And I thought, let's do it. Let's show the people how I draw caricatures. I've been drawing caricatures, actually a cartoon of a person. And I've been drawing caricatures for many, many years at carnivals and at fairs and after our church performances. And I thought, I'm going to go ahead and show people a few of my secrets and then they can go with it and do what they like. We're going to draw a caricature today of my friend Alexa, okay? And uh, she's got such a nice, sharp smile. I thought, we'll go ahead and see what we can do with it. When I draw caricatures, I have to draw them fast in three minutes. It's not like drawing a portrait. It's got to go quick. I have to look at the person and then immediately begin drawing. And that's what I challenge you to do. Not to just draw off of photographs, but to draw people sitting down. I begin always with the top of the head. And I see it's nice and rounded. And here's what I was, as I was mentioning earlier. It's fun to draw hair because hair you just basically run your pencil or your marker the way the hair's been combed. She has the hair combed back up here. Now up here, the hair turns. And I'm going to do the same thing. And the hair swings over on the bangs that way. I'll do that also. There we go. And remember, it's a cartoon, so don't take a whole lot of time with it. And she's got some little hairs that are running off kind of wild there, which we'll get to in a moment. Now, the next part to me in drawing a caricature is the hardest part of all. I've got to form her face right now in almost one move. I'm going to look 
and I see where it begins right up above the ears on both sides. I look down and all I see is how that cheek bounces out and moves. Down to the chin, comes around, again lots of cheeks, she's smiling and it goes back up to the hair. I've got to try that in one move. Remember, this is a cartoon. Sometimes I make the chin a little long and it's just fun. But I don't want to. She's kind of a, she's my friend by the way and she's a, a cute kid. So let's see what we can do. Here we go. One move. This takes time and practice. There it is. Whew. I hope it works. Now the next thing I move to, again like I've been teaching you throughout our program, is ears. I go over to the ears and I draw in her ears. And what's fun about drawing caricatures, you've got to remember an important thing. When you're drawing somebody, and especially if they're going to pay you money, you don't want to make fun of them too much. You've got to know when and when not to. If it's a boy or something, fine. But if it's somebody older, a grandpa or a grandma, be very sensitive and careful. I never draw wrinkles. I always call myself the doctor, and I always fix them up so they're fun looking and they're young looking. Never hurt anybody by your drawings. Try to always remember that. Okay. Now I'm going to finish bringing the hair in behind the ears. Now the next thing I do, I go for the nose. Remember where the nose goes. Look at the bottom of the ear. There are the nostrils right there. I'm going to come across and I've got to just do it by practice to the ears. And I don't make the nose very big. I see a little bit of white right on top there. And I'm going to add the nostrils. There we go. That's about all I do with the nose. I don't take time drawing this, the nose up and down here. A lot of people don't. Study and see. I don't draw the long part of the nose. The important thing is what you can see. And what you can see are those two little nostrils and some of the reflection and and, and the nostrils and, and the, the roundness of the nostrils. Now, let's go ahead and draw the cheek. There we go. See that line right there and right there? That's all I see. So that's what I draw right there. And now we've got to make that pretty mouth. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and make the lips. and the teeth. Now, this is all I draw when I draw a mouth. Let me explain it. The light is shining down more on, on, on the top of her lip and there's not much, uh, there's some shadowing right there. So as you can see, I fill that in with black to represent darkness. On the corners of the mouth, there's a little bit of black right there on both sides of the teeth, shadow. Then I bring the line across, do my little U shape underneath the mouth, which represents the thickness of the lip, and then I leave the teeth pretty well alone. Don't try drawing teeth. You're just going to mess everything up, and teeth don't look good drawn. It's better that you just give a little, I give a little dot right in the middle, and I, she might have braces on, I can't really tell there, but it, uh, it doesn't matter. You don't draw that stuff, okay, because braces soon go. Do as little as you can to try to give the idea of the mouth. Now, I'm going to get ready to draw the eyes. I go up a little ways. And this is tricky and it takes time. But I'm just going to give a feel of where her nose starts up at the top, right by the eyes, okay? Just a little feel. And now, whew, I've got to try to draw the eyes. Let's see if we can do it. She's got real pretty eyes. I look at them very carefully. And then I begin. Again, it's just going to take practice and time doing this. Now I'm going to just jump up and do her eyebrows. Okay. 
Now she's got real nice, dark, beautiful eyes. There's a secret on that. I've been kind of teaching you all along, but let's see how I do it. I draw one circle, two little lines, two little lines here. See that? Okay. Now, I've got a little secret on how I draw black eyes and how I draw blue eyes. There's a difference. Blue eyes are much lighter. In this case, Alexa's eyes are black. So this is how I draw black eyes. I thicken the top, I put a little dot in the middle, and I thicken the bottom. Same thing. I thicken the top, do a little dot in the middle, leaving white on both sides, and I thicken the bottom. Okay? There we go. Then, now, I'm going to put eyelashes on her. Real thin eyelashes, but they are important, especially with the girls. And then there's a little line right above each eye. So I put that in. There we go, right there. Okay. Now, let's finish out the hair. We're pretty well done with our hard stuff. Now, I can't, excuse me, I'll go back to the eyes a minute. I don't do a whole lot with the bottom of the eye. When I finish that eye, I leave it alone. As you can see, there's not much there. I don't put any wrinkles in there. I just do the eyes, and then I go ahead, and if there's a little bit of uh, right off the corners, I go ahead and bring it off the corner just a little bit, and that's all I do. Now we're getting ready to do the body. And of course, you know with caricatures, the head is always much larger than the body. So. Let's have her having fun just uh, jumping around, okay? Maybe we'll even make her driving. Let's make her driving a little sports car. That'd be fun. I just make the lines right there with the steering wheel. She's got one hand on the wheel. Just three little fingers is fine. That'll work. A couple little lines in the windshield makes it look like there's reflection of light glass looking through tires. Tires can be very hard to draw. Well, I've learned to make them easy. You just blacken them in. And on the hubcap, I make a little reflection on the hubcap, okay? Now she's driving kind of a modern car here. So, there we go. And now she's waving to all of her friends that are going to get to see this picture. And like I say, I don't take a lot of time with fingers. I really don't. Not in these type of things. The important thing is the face. Let's make her hair a little longer now because we know it is. And I'm going to kind of make it go back because she's driving along having fun. There it is. And if you'll notice something again, I'm going to make a few of the hairs flying through the air. There we go. There we are. The, the, the blackness of, if you notice, contrast. The darkness of the hair makes her face jump out all the more as, in, as if I would have not done the hair, then it would have just been white on white. But now there's black around her face pushing out her face to really make it jump out. Now, she's driving down the road. Let's give some speed. Boy, she's really moving along. She's waving at everybody. And I put a little line back here. Remember I taught you that in the last session on the horizon. There it is. I do a couple quick little mountains. And since we live near Phoenix, Arizona, I always put cactus into my pictures. So when people go back home, they remember, hey, that was drawn when I was out in the desert. A couple cactuses. We could even put the sunshine up there smiling. Whatever you want to do. And there you go. A little road. A little bit of texture again. Not much. We've taught you about that. And there goes Alexa in her brand new Porsche or Carmen Ghia. No, wait a minute, they don't exist anymore. Or whatever she likes. There it is. There's an example 
of how you can draw a caricature. Turn it over, back it up, back the video up, and have some fun. Go through everything. And I guarantee you, if you take the time and draw everything that I've drawn on this video, you're going to be a better artist. And I hope you'll come and see me someday and say it really helped, okay? Practice caricatures. Remember what I've taught you. The nose, the eyes, the mouth. This concludes the video. I hope you've enjoyed it. And God bless you until we see you next time on one of our future videos. Bye.